How's it going? It is Charles Botenstin. Today we are going to be discussing a perfect title in the video for a perfect line in the book that I'm reading right now. It's called A Better Way to Live by Oge Mandino. Mandino. <laughs> I hope it's Oge. OG. I don't know. Um, let's get all zoomed back in on that big Irish head of mine. There we go. No? All right. Come on. Let's go, camera. There we go. All right, so in there, whether it's zoomed in or not, in there he says, he's talking about, so in here are 17 rules to live by. And essentially, I'm on rule three, even though it's more than halfway through the book. So he talks about, in the beginning part of the book, he talks about himself and, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, it's easy for him to say because he's successful. Well, yeah, dude, he probably wasn't always successful. <laughs> you know, he probably uh, he probably came from something, you know, for myself. You know, I wasn't, you know, in the future when I talk and, and I write books and things like that, people are like, oh, he was always successful. Well, no, you're looking at me October something, 2014, 30th, Thursday, October 30th, 2014, and... I consider my. I have to force myself to consider myself a success because otherwise, I get insecure and I'm like, well, you could be doing a lot better. And it's just be grateful for what you have is the main gist of many books. So in here he says, and he's talking about mistakes, failures, goals, going for your goals and failing on the way. And he says, this line really hit me. How will you know your limits without an occasional failure? It's like, seriously, how will you know your limits? How will you know your limits without an occasional failure? That's pretty an amazing statement, and it's true, and it's something that I'm working on, but it's something that I've read a lot about, is that how will you know how far you can go? And it's easy to say, but actually believing it and, and feeling it and putting it into practice is the challenging part. How will you know how far to go? How will you know what your limit is in fitness, in running, in jogging, in eating healthy, in building muscle, in getting smarter, in wealth, in relationships, in communicating? How will you know how far you can go unless you try? Unless you actually go for it? Unless you unless you fail. And it's like, oh, okay, I tried, I failed, but at least I know my limit. Say you're here, you try for here, but you notice that you can actually be successful here. In other words, I tried to run 10 miles, but I only ran six. Previously, I was only running two, but now I know that six is my limit. 10, I tried, I failed, but six is now my limit. Now, you, now you're running six miles, and then you try for 10, and you do it. It's, it is an amazing concept. Actually, me just doing these videos is very beneficial for myself because that is something that I, I would normally highlight and not talk about or think about or do or believe. But I believed it because how will you know your limit unless you fail, unless you try? And it could be in anything, any area. So for myself, one is business. Like how will I know my limit? How will I know if I'm a good manager unless I hire someone? So that's a big insecurity right now. How will you know if you can manage two people, three people, 10 people, 100 people, unless you try? But failure is not that you, the company goes in, it's just failure that you're like, whoa, I'm overworked. I need to bring in more people. And that's essentially where I need to get my head around because I, I want to hire people and I've told myself you should hire people and you'd be a good manager, you'd be a good leader, you'd be a good motivator and <laughs> I, I haven't. So that's one area that I can tell, tell myself, listen, how will you know if you're a good manager or a bad manager unless you actually hire someone? Like that's a mate that is an amazing concept. So whatever area of your life 
you know, I just explained one. Another area of my life is running. I just signed up for the New York Road Runners. I ran a race five miles. Uh, my buddy had a, um, he, excuse me, he signed up. He wasn't able to do it. He already paid for it. He's like, hey, dude, just go run it. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I ran it and I was nervous. It was only five miles and I was, I was nervous. I play hockey a lot. I go to the gym. I could go more <laughs> to the gym, but that's one thing. Ah, ah. That's one area that I'm improving on. You should never go down the negative view. I should always say I'm improving on it. But the five miles I was nervous about. And then it inspired me because all the people around there were so positive. I saw people that were three times my age going past me. I saw people in wheelchairs, people that were younger, you know, all shapes and sizes, people that were more overweight that were passing me. And I'm like, holy cow, an inspiration, a really motivating factor is seeing someone that's way out of shape that's passing you on mile four going to the finish line on mile five. You know, that's amazing. So what area, So that's another area is that I see marathon running. That's, that's a goal is to be a marathon runner. And right now that is pretty far out there, running for four miles. You know, I ran for 45 minutes or whatever five miles is. I averaged, no, 35 minutes. 35 minutes? Yeah, I averaged eight, eight minutes, eight times five, 35. So I ran for 35 minutes. And I was like, I was, I was pretty winded going into the finish line. I, I was glad to stop. <laughs> and now I have to run five times that? Yeah, I would say that's a pretty big goal for me. So how are you gonna know your limit? How was I gonna know my limit is more than five miles because I was able to do five miles. So I didn't fail, I didn't slow down. Eight minutes is a pretty good pace. So I went in, I didn't fail, so now I know my limit is not five miles. My limit could be seven miles or eight miles or 10 miles. Or you know, eventually it's gonna be a marathon. So find an area, how will you know your limit? How will you know your limit? Unless, let's read it again, because to be honest, this, this is amazing. How will you know your limits without an, without an occasional failure? Without an occasional failure. Brilliant. And then he goes on, never quit, your turn will come. Unbelievable book. I'm only, well, I shouldn't say unbelievable book because I'm only on rule three. It's a good book. I have his other book, which is The Greatest Salesman in the World. I think it's called, yeah, that one I'm gonna read next, tell you how that one goes. Anyway, how will you know your limits without an occasional failure? That is an amazing, powerful story. So whatever part of your life you wanna change, with say it's relationships, if you wanna get a girlfriend, how are you gonna know your limits without approaching a girl? You know, that's one area of my life. You know, I'm a single guy, you know, I, I have to go up and fail talking to girls. Sometimes, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But how am I gonna know my limits? How am, I gonna, how am I gonna be able to push myself if I cannot go up and approach someone that I think is attractive? You know, it's like, <laughs> like what, what? You know, so the way, the way I, I look at it, by the way, because I do approach women, is that the way I look at it is you can fail to succeed, but I don't. I go in there with a conversation that's about the environment, like, oh, it's a beautiful day, or this is a cool coffee shop, or this is a great restaurant, or how's your food, or whatever. I don't know. Whatever the environment is, I think of something. But it's like, how are you going to know your limit on, say, someone that you're nervous to talk to because she's attractive, she's surrounded by other girls, or whatever. How are you going to know your limits unless an occasional failure, and trust me, I fail a lot when it comes to, on Saturday, I was one for six, and one for six, and I don't even think we exchanged contact numbers. So, it's like, how are you gonna know your limit? You know, the other ones had boyfriends or just weren't interested, that it wasn't their type, but how are you gonna know your limit if you're trying to get a girlfriend? How are you gonna know your limit if you're trying to get a boyfriend? You know, one of my friends, a great girl, approaches guys at the gym. She talks to guys at the gym. She's like, I'm attracted to gym guys. I'm, a jacked, I'm, I'm attracted to, I was gonna say jacked, probably jacked guys. 
you know, gym rats. That's who she's attracted to. So why is she going to go to a bar if she's not attracted to those guys? Yes, gym guys go to bars, but if she's already in the environment that she's attracted to a guy, how is she going to know the limit on what she's attracted to or the attractiveness of the guy or the confidence of the guy or the successfulness of the guy wealth-wise? Unless she actually tries, and she does, which is amazing, and I give her huge props. Anyway, we're at 11 minutes right now. I'm Charles Bowenston. Go out, subscribe to my videos, follow me on Instagram. This is something I love doing because I read a book, and then I tell you about it. It also, I tell you about it, but also it, it, it goes ingrained in my head, and then I try and live it today, and then hopefully live it tomorrow, and then hopefully live it, and then I, I just stack on top of each other. So subscribe to our YouTube videos, our, my YouTube videos, and Instagram. That's our favorite social media. Our, I keep on saying our. Anyway, talk to you guys soon. Talk